Well, hey, church, I hope you're having a great Sunday thus far. You know, this message is going to be a little bit different than normal. And honestly, in the coming weeks, it uh, might be the same. We'll just, we'll just see what happens. You know, this has always been my commitment uh, to you and, and always will be my commitment to you is simply to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit and say what's on the heart of God. You could say that God has called me to be a voice for him. Now, that might sound strange for some of you, but that's also the life that God has called you to, that our life and our words would echo the life and words of God himself on this amazing earth that he made us. And so here we are, Sunday, June the 7th, the year is 2020. And on this day in history, the sin of racism still not only exists, but is prevalent in our country. Might I tell you that not once in my life have I been out for a run and been afraid for my life. Not once have I felt threatened by a police officer. My parents, you know, never had to sit me down and educate me on how to interact with a police officer. Not once have I, and fill in the blank, with the numerous instances and situations that our black brothers and sisters feel and experience on a regular basis. And so we must talk about this. I know for all of you, you're likely feeling unrest. All of us are. Some of us are feeling this as a result of the murder of, of George Floyd. Others are feeling this because of the chaos that we see on our streets. You know, Judas Smith, whom I consider like a dad to me from afar, he said this this week. He said, protest is the language of the voiceless. And he went on to encourage us saying, I hope you see pain before you see problem. Many of you want order, but there is no order without justice. These words have been ringing in my head all week long. You know, many of us are outraged. Many of you are outraged that property is being destroyed. And don't get me wrong, we do not condone violence. But what's horrible and what is tragic is not that material possession and brick and mortar are being destroyed, but that repeatedly lives are being evaluated as less than and instead of getting a fair trial, are getting killed on our streets. This is not okay. And as uncomfortable as you might feel hearing me talk about this right now, I want you to know that Mixed Church, we're here for it. I think you'd agree that in all of this right now, there is there's really no lack of opinion. There are countless voices speaking countless opinions about protesting, innumerable, innumerable words are being written and spoken about racism and murder and hatred and bigotry and all the like. And I don't intend to wrangle all of these opinions into my own opinion in the short time that we have together today. My aim is simply this, to in the midst of a loud and opinionated world, seek the opinion of God. You know, I think when emotions are high, it can be so easy for us to forget that God has an opinion. More than that, God has a way. Meaning when, when something is in the heart of God, it comes along with the means to arrive at that destination. This is the beauty of God, that the things that are in his heart, he actually directs us into them in the experience of our living. See, you don't have to get far in the Bible to get God's opinion on humanity. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created. And in his image, he made us male and female. In his image. I pray that when you hear that, you understand that there are no levels of humanity. What God feels about the one, he feels about all. All. Whether we agree with it or not, all are created in the image of God. Which means that racism is the hating of of our own kind. And I am not here today to stand and, and ascribe to you that you are racist. But what I am challenging you on is this. If this is not God's heart and you know and love him, what does that mean for you? Might we look at the life of Jesus for a moment and just see what he's calling us into? You know, in all my reading of the story of Jesus, I've come to see some things that are very repetitious in his life, meaning they show up often. One of those things is that, that's always stood out to me is moments where Jesus was moved with compassion. Moved with compassion. It's all over the Gospels. Notice the language there. There's a movement to compassion. 
Compassion does not sit idly by. Compassion moves. Compassion goes. Compassion speaks. You know, in all these instances where we see Jesus moved with compassion, it always leads to action. You know, with a leper, he reached out and touched him, even though that was culturally wrong for him to do. With the crowd, it moved him to teach them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. With the blind, compassion moved him to touch their eyes and be a healing for them. And we could go on and on through the life and, and, and story of Jesus. Jesus was moved with compassion. Now what we need to understand is there is no compassion without empathy. And empathy at its core is about connection. And so to put that all together, compassion and the way of Jesus always leads us into connection. And here's another thing we must notice when we read these instances. Jesus does not, now hear me, Jesus does not limit his compassion, rather his connection, to people who are like him. Jesus is consistently engaging with, sharing life with, inquiring of people who are completely different than him. You know, the woman at the well, both a woman and a Samaritan, is the least of the least. And the lepers whom Jesus touched were unclean and not considered to be part of society. Jesus was with prostitutes, thieves, tax collectors, the poor, the rich, and Jesus moved in. Why? Because even though society had norms and society had rules and society had systems, Jesus was from a place that had a different set of values and a different system. And so Jesus, hear this, did not hide behind what was culturally normal. If something was culturally normal in this nation, but is culturally set against the culture of heaven, we must break through it and make connection. Friends, here is our reality. White people have an upper hand in our country. And you might find that culturally, culturally normal. I do not. The Bible tells me that my citizenship is in heaven, where Jesus is, which means that culture and those values have supreme rule over my heart and my action. And so hear me say this, black lives matter. This is the issue we're talking about. We're not talking about another issue. Black lives matter. And so if we are followers of Jesus, if we who are followers of Jesus, this is our time to see our brothers and sisters and be moved with compassion. But let me assure you, this will not be easy. This won't be quick. This won't be comfortable, but this will certainly be worth it. Empathy right here says this, I want to feel and carry what you are feeling and carrying. Now I've said this before and I'll say it again. Empathy does not exist at a distance. And can I be candid in telling you that, that you can't feel and carry that which you remain distant from? It's not possible. So now I'm just gonna ask you a question and this question isn't condemning. It's just the honest kind of questions that we must begin to ask ourselves in order to grow and thrive in our hearts with the culture of heaven. Here's a question. What does my dinner table look like? Who are the people that I invite into my world regularly? Now, I've been challenged by this for a few years now. And this is something that me and my family wrestle with often. Because the reality is, if my world only looks like me or believes like me or votes like me or whatever, my world revolves around me. And I'm just not comfortable living in a world that revolves around me. And so that means that some of us, we're gonna to have to forego our opinions on some things in order to love our neighbor. Some of us are going to have to sacrifice the opinion of maybe what others think of us. Church, we are not those who hold others' opinions of us in higher regard than God's opinion of us and of ourselves. And, God, and honestly, God's opinion of others. Now, please hear me. I am not here to shame you. I'm here to challenge you and to encourage you to evaluate. Where and in what ways do I, not the government, not the system, not any of that, where do I allow and encourage racism to exist? This doesn't make you a horrible person. In fact, it takes a strong person to genuinely examine their heart. I'm sure you know David in the Bible. He was 
He was honestly far from perfect. But he regularly prayed this dangerous prayer to God to examine his heart. He would say, God, find any wrong way within me. Here's the deal, y'all. It is way easier not to choose empathy. It is way easier to not feel and carry what others are feeling and carrying. But this, this is the way of Jesus. And so we're going to pray because we don't fight with weapons. Prayer is our weapon. But before we do, I have some things I want to ask of you. That in addition to praying, you would do these four things that you know, conveniently all start with the letter L. I'm asking you to listen, learn, love, and to lead. Listen to the source and, and listen to God. In a city as diverse as ours, it's not difficult to put yourself into circles where you can connect with people of color. And out of that genuine relationship, hear their experiences. And so maybe rather than turning on the news every night, what if we began to listen to the pain and hurting from those who are actually in pain and hurting? And maybe we keep our butts out of it. Yeah, but it's just not helpful here. The Bible says to mourn with those who are mourning. This is the way of Jesus. And we're going to learn. You know, there are amazing resources out there, enough that you don't have to be ignorant any longer. Please watch the movies, read the books, listen to the podcasts, read the history. Don't sit idly by expecting me or, or your neighbor to teach you. If you don't know where to start, we're going to put some resources together for you just to be of help to you. But please listen and learn. Also, we're going to love. You know, John 13, 34 says that a new command I give to you, Jesus says. He says, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Which begs the question, how has Jesus loved? What is the language of his love? Well, it's sacrifice. Give up your opinions and move into the opinion of God. And lastly, I'm asking you to lead in your homes, in your workplaces, at your gyms, at your restaurants, lead, speak, stand up, and stand for. Church, be certain we are not going away, and we are not going to grow silent, and we are going to be part of the change that our city needs. But before we pray, let me just remind you, heaven is the place that we'll all be together, every one of us, every race, together. And here on earth, we're called to be a representation of there, of those values. And the only way we can do that is together. White, black, together. This is not their fight. Hear me, my black brothers and sisters. This is not your fight. This is our fight. We are one in Christ. Come on, church. Can we pray and ask God to invade our city, invade our world, and lead us forward into the future that he has in mind for us and for our children and for their children. Come on, let's pray. Jesus, we need you. God, we, we do not have the answer. But we know that, that you have put a yes in our spirit to step in stride with you. And so, Holy Spirit, we ask you to lead us. God, we, we like David, we pray, the, we pray the bold prayer right now. God, where are we wrong in our own hearts? Where do we enable these problems to exist? And God, help us and give us the strength to deal with the heart work that is often the hardest work. God, I pray that we would be a people who, who not only listen, but learn, lean in and love, and then lead in the area of change. God, as we worship, I ask that you would help us to truly see in this moment where you are, to truly empathize, to feel and to carry with those who are hurting and in pain. God, lead your church. Change and transform your city. We trust you for it. In Jesus' name.